Hey guys, welcome back to Keys of the Cosmos. With some of this new equipment that I've sort of been introducing into my imaging session rigs and slowly incorporating and uh, capturing data when it comes to astrophotography, I wanted to make some videos on sort of the process of doing this. Hopefully I'll be able to answer some questions, some of the pros and cons when it comes to things like an astrophotography dedicated camera or maybe even uh, using an astrography mount like the video I made not too long ago. Check that out if you haven't already. I've been using that mount, fooling around with it and starting to get more familiar with it. But you know, it's sometimes it's people are hesitant to, to take the next step. Maybe you've been using a DSLR for a few weeks, a few months, maybe even a couple of years. And you know, as I've always said, you can take some beautiful pictures with DSLR. And if that's all you're able to use, there's no worries with that. It's still a great tool. But eventually, if you get very serious about astrophotography, you're probably going to start looking at something like an astrophotography dedicated camera. So in this video in particular, I wanted to sort of highlight the pros and cons of using each, how they differ, and sort of how I've sort of started to wrap my head around using this camera, um, and uh, what you you know what you need to know going into it so that you can make a decision and when you feel that you're ready to do it if you decide to. So first of all, when it comes to DSLR. Just quickly go over the pros. You know, obviously, um, they can cost a lot of money, but I've always said for astrophotography, just buy a lower end one, maybe even a used one. You can get a used one fairly cheap. You don't have to spend a ton of money. And in, and in general, we're familiar with cameras, um, how they work. You know, the idea that you take a picture, it appears on the screen. There are some settings that you need to know, but you know, quick Google search, search on YouTube, you can find that no problem. A quick few adjustments to the camera and it's ready to go uh, with a light pollution filter and a, and a telescope and all that. But the camera itself, you know, you just need a few options to set on it and it's ready to go. Is not a huge or a very steep learning curve, right? If I can figure it out, anyone can. And I knew absolutely nothing about photography when I started this hobby. So that's definitely, you know, a pro. It's, it's something that most people can wrap their head around fairly quickly. And, uh, you know, you have the, the, you take the shot, it appears on the screen. That's something that's familiar to us. And it's all self-contained. You have your battery in here, you have the memory card. You really don't need anything else to run this um, device. Now for the cons, you know, with all that being said, there are obviously quite a few. So first of all, when we think about astrophotography, we're taking pictures of very dim objects, very far away, and we're doing it in the dark. These cameras were not made specifically for low light uh, photography. So they're gonna struggle a little bit. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can take beautiful pictures with them, of course, but it's not something, it's not one of their strengths, let's put it that way. So the low light is not something that they definitely shine in. Excuse the pun. In addition to that, we've talked about this many times, but thermal noise is a big issue with these. You think about it, uh, regular photography, you're taking quick shots, you know, and you can take many of them. But when you're taking long exposures, even one minute, that's a long exposure for uh, your typical photography, that's gonna introduce a lot of heat. That shutter's staying open, and that sensor is gonna start to get warm. And then you magnify that on a hot summer night outside, that chip will really be burning hot. And that introduces noise into your images. And noise is that fuzziness, that gas. We want it to look smooth, but it looks really fuzzy. And then we gotta work extra hard in post-processing to remove that noise. So thermal noise is obviously a big problem as well. And because of that um, variance in temperature, you could say from night to night, depending on the circumstances and all that, uh, using a DSLR, I would say you probably um, rely more on calibration frames. So I have never, I realize I've never really talked a lot about calibration frames, probably because I don't do them all. So I feel like a bit of a hypocrite, but. There are three basic types, I'm not gonna get into it, but basically there's bias frames, dark frames, and flat frames. And these are frames or exposures that you take separately, either the same night or you, some of them you can do at any time. And when you add those in with your regular light, light uh, pictures, your regular exposures of the target itself, you throw that into stacking software, it uses those to pr produce a better picture. Let's just put it that way, and to make processing easier. That's a very basic, simple explanation. but. A camera like this is what, getting back to the point, will definitely re rely on those a little bit more and that's because of the temperature. So using those cons to move into the pros of a dedicated AstroCam. Well, first of all, we talked about low light conditions 
These were made specifically for that. You're not taking landscape and portrait pictures with this camera. It's only made for dark, deep space imaging. Okay, it has a backlit um, uh, sensor and it's a lot more sensitive, so it's going to capture light, generally speaking, faster and do a better job. And that's, make, and that's also making, of course, processing easier to help bring that target and make it pop out from the background. So that's the first thing. And the second one was thermal temperature. Well, this is called the ASI 294MC Pro. The Pro refers to this little fan on the back. And you can see here, if you look through, you can probably see my thumb, right, moving. That's a vent. That cold air blows in from that fan and onto the sensor and it can, you can actually set the temperature. So you can say, keep this at minus 10 and that camera will stay at minus 10 for every, the sensor will for every single exposure. So you have consistency. And that's why this, although you still generally take calibration frames, you can get away without them a little bit more with a camera like this because you have that consistency throughout the night and throughout your session and throughout multiple night imaging. It doesn't matter where you are if it's cold one night and warm one and warm the other, the, you're setting the temperature inside the camera, so that will be consistent. So that's definitely a major advantage. So when we're talking about um, image quality, there's no doubting that these do a better job. I don't think anyone could argue that, but that's why that's because that's what they're made for. So those are the major, I would say, advantages. The other one I'll mention, this is kind of specific to this camera, but this is a micro four thirds sensor. I know you, if you've never heard of that, um, might be hard to understand. And I'll be honest, I'm not a, an expert on sensors at all, but basically to help explain it, it's a smaller sensor than what's in say my DSLR. This is an APS-C crop sensor. So what that does is because, you know, on my channel, I'm always talking about simple astrophotography, we're using small refractors, on a small star tracker, for the most part, we can't throw on a giant telescope with a lot of focal length. So we're always limited to what we can shoot, right? It's hard to shoot smaller targets and it's harder to crop. With this, because it's a smaller sensor, it's actually a smaller, a less wide field of view. So it gives you the appearance that you have more mag magnification or focal length. Of course you don't, you're using the same telescope, but with that smaller sensor, you're, you're imaging less portion of the sky, so the target itself appears bigger. Hopefully that made sense. So here's sort of an explanation to help you see what I'm talking about. This is a website called Astrophotography Tools. I recommend it. It's free to go on there and use it. Um, it's a great tool to help plan out your session and, and make sure your equipment is going to do the job for the target that you want. So here's an example of the Lagoon Nebula. So that's it in the center. Now there are two different squares here. There's the green one. Now that's, uh, I input my Sharp Star 76 millimeter. I included that there's a reducer on it, a 0.8 time reducer. And so that gives an accurate uh, total focal length for that. And then I um, typed in sort of a, a DSLR similar to mine. It's not the exact same model, they didn't have it, but a very similar one with the same chip size, sensor size. And so that shows you that green square exactly, basically, exactly what, how much you're gonna get in the frame. So you can see how the lagoon will appear you see the triffid above that, if you were to move it up, how it, are you gonna be able to fit the two? That's why it's such a great tool. But you see here when the, in the yellow square, that's the exact same telescope, reducer, all that, but simply removing the DSLR and using this camera. You see the difference? It's not, I mean, it's not double, but you can see it's a lot smaller. Field, it's a significantly smaller field of view anyway. So that sort of helps you to, to image those smaller targets. And I've already noticed from imaging targets from last fall, or summer fall and now use it, imaging them again using the same telescope but with this camera I'm able to get more zoomed in and they appear bigger and that helps you get more detail and enables you to crop not have to crop quite as much and then lose quality on that detail so for me that's been an advantage now again there's a million different almost not literally but there's a lot of different models they all have different sensor sizes so that's something you have to kind of do your research but with this particular one the 294 MC Pro it's a micro four thirds. So I've enjoyed that little bit of appearance of more magnification, even though really it's just a smaller section of the sky. Now, what are some of the downsides of an astro dedicated camera? Well, you have a learning curve. You see there's, unlike a DSLR, where it's sort of, I mentioned it's sort of familiar to us, it's what we know, everything's on there. This is actually the exact opposite. There's no screen, there's no power button. All you do is, all you have is ports in this fan. So what that means is that you need something else to run the camera for you to operate it. And that means either using software 
on your laptop. So there's going to be a connection to your laptop to the camera. Or you can use something like what I use, the ASI Air. Um, and that's been, in, in my opinion, the best way. And the reason is that, yes, it costs money. Okay, so we'll, we'll count that as a con. Um, it's something else that you have to buy. But even if you use it in the simplest form, okay, there's an advantage to it. But and on top of that, it, it sort of opens the door to so many other things down the road when you're ready to. You can control your mount with that ASI Air Pro. You can, oh, so many things. It does, it literally does, you can do polar lining with it, which I'm, I've already been using, and it, you get a much more accurate polar line. So many things, I can't even get into it. But you can also just simply use it almost like a glorified intervalometer. You can think of it that way, because um, it'll just simply control the exposure length, how many you want to take, It'll turn the camera off once it's done. And um, you can use it as simple as that. And then when you're ready, you can start using some of the other features. So that's a con that, yeah, you have to buy something else or you need to use software and you know you need to bring a laptop out with you if that's how the route you choose to go. But there's also a lot of advantages that come with that. So we'll consider that a con for now, but uh, along with that is the learning curve, right? So it's gonna take a little bit of time, but hopefully I'll help you in this video to sort of wrap your head around it. Um, another one of the cons that goes with it, it needs its own power as well. So there's no battery that you can just insert into this or anything like that. Um, you need to power it. So that means usually having, you know, something like this, this Celestron uh, power tank. Um, you know, you don't need anything crazy, but the, the lower the temperature that you set it at, the more power it's going to consume. And it is quite a different difference. So I, I set it at minus 10, which is, I think, the lowest setting. I think you can go all the way to minus 40. I don't know why you need to, but... Even at minus 10, it removes a lot of that noise. So something else to consider, you need power. Um, and the other thing I'll mention too, just sort of as a con, it's a little bit more finicky with um, connecting it to the telescope and getting the right focus and back focus. So focus is obviously, that's self-explanatory, getting focus on the stars, you know, using a bat knob mask. But then back focus is more like having elongated stars around the edges because it's either too close or too far to the sensor of the camera, the, the next, the, the last piece of glass, I should say, from the imaging setup. So whether that's the telescope itself or the focal reducer, hopefully that makes sense. I, I don't have time to get into a lot of detail, but basically you need to set the right distance. And the difference is with a DSLR, I've talked about this before, you have a T adapter that you buy. So this is made for um, specifically for Canon cameras. It connects to your camera. And then that width of that, um, T adapter provides the exact right amount of um, back focus. So all you need to do is purchase something like this, which is super cheap, attached to the camera. This attaches onto the telescope and you're ready to go. And I've attached a DSLR to multiple telescopes, big and medium size, never had a problem, right? You attach it, you're ready to go. Now with this, the very first night I attached it to my Sharp Star, I couldn't get focus. Um, so right away I realized, you know, the, the focuser was all the way out and I still wasn't able to go far enough out to get focus. So I had to use this here, which basically is just, it, it helps bring the, the camera farther away from the last piece of glass so that you can uh, attain focus. It's an, it's an extension tube, essentially. It comes with the camera. ZW is very good with that. They give you a bunch of stuff when you buy a camera like this so that you should have just about everything you need. You might need an adapter to attach to the telescope or a filter drawer, you know, I'm not gonna get into all that, but basically it's probably in the box. It's just gonna take some time to fool around with it and figure out what works. So I attached this, this went on to the camera, this went on to the telescope and it was fine. So, you know, it's just a bit more finicky. It gets more complicated, I think, with a bigger telescope and when you start introducing more things onto it. So back focus can be tricky, but um, it's a little bit more finicky with, with a camera like this. So just something to keep in mind as well. But just sort of moving on to using it and what I would recommend. Now, as I mentioned, I use an ASI Air. Um, it's nice. You don't have to bring a laptop out, especially when it's really cold. You can just use your tablet. So basically, the ASI Air is a, is a Raspberry Pi um, computer box. Here's a picture of it here. And it creates its own Wi-Fi signal that connects wirelessly to your tablet. And then basically, now, instead of having a camera screen, that tablet is your camera screen. So that's what really helped me to, to uh, wrap my head around it. It's all it is really, if you're using um, the ASI Air in the most simple way, just think of it as your camera screen, honestly. Your intervalometer and your camera screen. 
So when I do my focus, um, I don't even use the focus feature. I just take a short exposure on the preview mode. It does a 10 second exposure, even a five second exposure. Of course, I have my batten off mask on the end of my telescope. And it shows me the picture. I look, I see the, you know, the crosshairs there, whatever. And I just make adjustments accordingly to get that line to go right through. I've talked about that in other videos. Uh, and then I keep doing that until I find it. So that's just like a DSLR. There's no difference. The only difference is you're looking at your tablet instead of the back of a, a camera, your DSLR. So think of it that way. Um, and then really, once you're in focus, you still find your target manually if you're using a star tracker. With the ASIR, you have the option on a professional mount to connect it. The ASIR can connect the mount, and now it's a go-to mount using the ASIR. But that's a whole other issue and a whole other video. I haven't even done that myself. So we're, think we're thinking of it just in the most simple way. So now once you're focused, basically, that is how is now your inner barometer. So what you're going to do is you're going to input your focal length. So it's going to ask you for the focal length. So you factor in your, if you're using a focal reducer, that's a quick Google search. Sharp star with focal reducer. It'll tell you the exact focal length. I think it's 339 millimeters for mine. You input that and you tell it what camera you're using and that's it. It does the rest. It basically figures out for you um, based on that information. And then all you have to do is set the, the auto run. So, um, you set like how many exposures you want to do, how long, and it'll also give you the option to turn the, AS, the um, ASI air off afterwards. So you don't have to worry about that. So basically it's just like a, a, a an intervalometer. But the nice thing is as it's taking pictures, it's showing you each sing, each exposure on the, on the um, tablet or whatever you're using, your smartphone. So what's nice about that is it takes a picture and then immediately starts taking the next one. So it's not, there's no time delay in between. So it's very nice, it takes pictures fast, but as it's taking the next one, in about five seconds, that last exposure shows up on your tablet. So now you have a nice big picture of what you just did. You can zoom in on it, you can look at your stars. Um, it actually shows you, you know, with a fairly bright object, a, a nice picture on, on there, a fairly detailed one. Um, here's some pictures of like uh, the eagle and the, uh, I've showed them in previous videos, the dumbbell. See, those are nice color pictures um, that you can see as you go. So you can sort of see your progress and make sure there's no issues. And uh, you see this picture here of an actual screenshot. There's a lot of different things you can look at if you want to. There's a histogram, there's, you know, different settings you can fool around with. But if you don't want to touch any of that, you don't have to. It just will show you the exposure and you can look at it and then move on or you can shut the tablet the screen off and just go to bed and let it do its thing and it'll as i mentioned it'll even shut the asi air off once it's done so you know power that off and power the camera off now for as i've mentioned in another video the way i do it is i power my um, asi air using my power tank so it's just a simple wire into the asi air and then from there the asi air comes with a variety of wires so again you don't have to buy anything extra i picked one of the shorter ones and i just connect it to the back of the camera and there's also a USB uh, port. So basically when this thing takes the pictures, it uses the USB port to send it to the ASI Air and the ASI Air stores it, stores it on the memory card that's within it. And then once you're done, the end of the night, you take that memory card, input it into your laptop, and there you go, you have your images. So it's, you know, it, it may sound complicated, it's actually very simple. There's maybe an extra wire, you need some additional um, power supply, but that's not a big deal. It's really not a lot of wires. You just need that and you need your tablet That's the or your smartphone. That's the only extra stuff you're bringing out. If you're doing it the simple way, as I've always explained um, imaging using a star tracker. You don't even have to use the polar line feature that's on the ASI Air. I mean, I recommend you start getting used to it right away because it does give you a much more accurate polar line and it's really not that hard to do. But at first you can just manually polar line like you normally would. So basically the only thing that's different is you're using Again, the ASI Air is your LDC screen, as you would on your DSLR, and it's basically your intervalometer. And what's nice too is that when it comes to taking your dark frames, because again, you're controlling the temperature at the end of the night, you don't have to stay up and leave the, the, the camera and the telescope outside because of that temperature sensitive thing, you know, for dark frames, for them to really work properly. They should be in the same setting you can take everything down and just set leave that temperature still minus 10 put the cap on specify on the asi air take dark frames 
how many, however many you want to take, set it and go to bed. It'll turn itself off after the next morning you can retrieve the data on that memory card. So it's really easy. And although yes, there is a learning curve, it's, I find it more enjoyable. I love looking at that tablet screen. You know, on a camera screen, yeah, you can look at your pictures, but they don't look pretty good. They're very small. You can see so much more on that tablet. And I think it's very good for, I was thinking for kids too, if you're trying to get your kids into astrophotography or just astronomy in general, you can actually show them pictures as you take them. And you can do a multiple, I was thinking you could do a multitude of targets in one night and you get some fairly decent pictures, even off one exposure that you just wouldn't get with like a camera and a telescope. So that that's a great feature. But as I mentioned, that ASA Air runs, it does so many things. So I really do recommend if you can afford it, to, to get that along with it. And I think it'll really enhance the, you know, the experience of using that. But that's a decision you need to make. You know, obviously it come, when it comes to a camera like this, it's something you need to buy totally separate. It's not like you can just add something onto your DSLR. It's a whole nother camera itself. So it costs money. Um, the the ASA Air costs money. Other than that, it comes with just about everything you need. It comes with a case. It comes with a bunch of adapters. I don't think you'll need to buy much, but it's the camera itself that's gonna cost. So. I get it. For some people, it's just not possible. And as I mentioned, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with the SLR astrophotography. You can get some amazing results with that. So I don't want anyone to ever feel bad. You know, maybe take some time, save up for it if you can't afford it right now. But it is something to think about in the future if it's not for you right now. I wish I had done it a little bit earlier. You know, I, I hate learning new things. I get frustrated. I'm not the most patient person always with that. But I really it really is not that complicated. And using the ASI Air so far, has been really enjoyable. So I wish I'd started earlier. So that's one thing I will say. If, if it's something you're considering, start earlier than later. I think you'll, you won't regret it. And uh, it'll really enhance your astrophotography. So I hope that helps guys. That's just sort of a really brief overview, some pros and cons, just to give you an idea of how I've incorporated this. And I'm real, as I mentioned, I'm really enjoying it. I love going out there with my tablet and seeing those exposures come and, uh, and starting to learn new features. And eventually I'll connect it to my new mount and it'll become a go-to mount and then you know i'll make videos on that as well but hopefully that helps guys so again we're talking about moving from a dslr to a dedicated astrocam both are great both do the job this one does it a little better there's no doubt about it but they both work and they both uh, can produce some pretty amazing results so whatever you're using guys i hope you enjoy it feel free to ask any questions in the comments you know if there's anything i miss please include that as well or uh, whatever maybe program you're using to control your Astro Dedicated cam Camera, you can share that with us as well. But as always, guys, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.